cockroaches have been pestering people since... Oh, since about 300 million years before people even existed. And it is said they will be here long after humans have vanished off the face of the earth. So how do you fight these resilient bugs? And why would you even want to? Well, cockroaches can spread disease and make a mess. Some people are allergic to the shed skins and droppings from cockroaches. And having cockroaches around can aggravate asthma. Then there's the legal aspect. Your local health department doesn't want cockroaches in a kitchen, and they could shut your kitchen down. Find out what your local laws and regulations say about that. Back to the first question, though. How do you fight cockroaches? With a one-two punch. Proper sanitation together with exclusion will knock cockroaches back. And the good news is that if you keep things clean and keep the building tight, you'll keep out not just cockroaches, but also ants, mice, rats, and the health department. And that's a good thing. So where do we start? Well, let's go see our University of California IPM advisor again. Andrew, when we've got a cockroach problem, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, the first thing you want to do is determine what species of cockroach you have. Proper identification is crucial for making effective pest management decisions. Decisions. So we need to do different things for different cockroaches? Absolutely. So we have indoor species and outdoor species. And of course, the strategies and tactics, the pest management strategies and tactics that we employ will be different for these two groups. Now, speaking of outside cockroaches, I've seen some really big cockroaches outside. What are they? Well, there are a number of species that live and breed outdoors. So for instance, we have the oriental cockroach, the American cockroach, this is the Turkestan cockroach. This is a new species for California. We also have, this is the field cockroach and the smoky brown cockroach. So as I mentioned, these species live and breed outdoors, but from time to time, they're gonna come indoors for food, water, and shelter. So our job is to keep them out. Exclusion, right? I know a thing or two about exclusion. <laughs> One of the easiest, cheapest, and most effective things you can do to keep out cockroaches and other critters is to have door sweeps on all exterior doors. Weather stripping for windows and doors is a good idea too. Drains need small gauge screens so cockroaches can't crawl in through the pipes. These things keep outdoor cockroaches outside. But what about indoor cockroaches? Well, the most common are uh, German cockroaches. And so they live and breed indoors. They're nocturnal, so you're not likely to see them during the day. So it's the German cockroach we really have to worry about after we've done all of our exclusion. That's right. And it's important to quickly and effectively manage those German cockroaches. Just one female can produce 30,000 progeny in one year. Wow. I thought I came from a big family. <laughs> so what do German cockroaches like to eat? Well, they eat all kinds of things. Glue, paper, cardboard, grease that accumulates in kitchens, and then of course any crumbs that fall by the wayside, they even eat their own kind. Yikes. Where do they hang out? Well, they prefer warm, humid spaces, and then of course they also like tight uh, crevices and small spaces. When they travel, they're going to be traveling along walls and corners, and then of course, if they sense vibration or light, they scatter quickly. So I'm not likely to see them running around in the open during the day. Where would I find them? Well, we're going to be looking under appliances, in cracks and crevices, and in areas where food may accumulate. So this is a very clean kitchen. We have a lot of space under and behind appliances. A lot of these shelving units are on wheels. But let's take a look. I'm sure we can find something. Lead the way. So in a kitchen like this, we're going to be paying special attention to areas behind and under appliances. Uh, for instance, this here. We want to make sure we get a good look under and you can use a flashlight and a mirror tool to really help you out here to see into those hard to reach places. So with this mirror tool you can actually see under these appliances. See that? And behind appliances it's important to look. So actually here we see some uh, food that's fallen back behind this cooking surface and that's uh, a great way to attract pests. Speaking of cooking surfaces, uh, keep in mind we're going to be accumulating grease here when we're cooking. And so that grease is going to splatter and accumulate here on the surface itself, on surrounding walls, and then up above where the vents are. You see that? Also with cockroaches, we want to pay special attention to cracks and crevices. 
So uh, this seam here between these cooking units is a great example. Great, thanks Andrew. Mm -hmm. So when you're stomping around during the day, cockroaches will be hiding. To monitor for them, use sticky traps. Place the trap in or near typical cockroach hiding places to determine where they're living and breeding. You may want to draw yourself a map so that you can find all of your traps later because you will be coming back again and again to check and replace them. And remember, any cockroach that gets stuck in a sticky trap is one less roach for you to have to worry about. After monitoring for a while, you'll start to get a sense of how big a problem you have. So if it's only one field cockroach in a utility room, your attack can be as simple as this. If it's 10 German cockroaches in a school kitchen, we get to work. Remove food, water, and clutter that might provide a hiding place. In other words, keep the place clean and tidy. Everyone should wipe up spills immediately. If anyone eats in a classroom, they should clean up after themselves. The custodial staff should empty trash and recyclables at the end of each day. The art of good vacuuming means getting not just the floors, but also the baseboards and under appliances. And this baby is not just any old vacuum. It has a HEPA filter, so it removes eggs, roaches, and shed skins without causing a dust cloud. Vacuuming up all that cockroach stuff stops the next generation of cockroaches and removes the allergens that can trigger asthma. In the kitchen, don't hose down the floor. Hosing sprays water and food particles up and under the appliances, creating a tasty buffet for cockroaches. Use a mop instead. Remember, cockroaches will eat just about anything. So make sure you scrub the drains as well, since the cockroaches will eat all the scum in there. Make sure you check under sinks. It's dark here. It's moist. It's home sweet home to cockroaches. Fix any leaky pipes, wipe up any water, and keep the area clean and clutter free. After all that hard work and cleaning, you don't want a bunch of little feet tracking the dirt back in. So keep the little guys out. Yes, I'm still talking about cockroaches. This, this is your best friend when it comes to cracks, crevices, and holes. Seal as many as you can, both inside and outside, with appropriate sealant like this. Check this out. Molding usually has a space behind it. If molding is loose, it makes for a great hiding place for cockroaches. So, look for loose molding and seal it up. Store all food in tightly sealed containers, not in cardboard, and on metal wire shelves. That way you're giving cockroaches no place to hide and no food to eat. And if you've done all that, you may still have cockroaches. As I said, they're hard to get rid of. You may need to use a pesticide. Just remember, pesticide treatments will be much more effective if you start off with all that cleanup we just did. Self-contained baits are the most effective option. The risk of pesticide exposure to people is low. And because cockroaches share the bait, as well as eat their fallen comrades, it affects the entire population quickly. Gel or paste baits can be used in cracks and crevices. Use a bait gun or a syringe to apply them where no one can get to them. Refresh baits as needed. They can dry out quickly and become useless. What about these? Aerosol sprays, foggers, they only kill the cockroaches the pesticide touches, and they drive the ones that survive into other areas, so now you have an even bigger problem. Plus, you could have pesticide residue all over the place. So let's say you've been dealing with cockroaches for the past, oh, it feels like a million years. How are you doing? Are you making headway? Well, check your notes. Remember to keep good records, especially if you had to use pesticides. That's the best way to learn how to tackle pests effectively. In our next episode, we'll move up the food chain to mice and rats. Don't miss it.